it's pretty well established that the population was about a quarter billion at the time of Christ, and it's now six billion. And if you plot the numbers on a graph, you can see it points clearly to the entire population starting about 4,400 years ago, when eight people got off of Noah's Ark. I can already tell this is going to be a stupid one. I refuse to believe that this guy doesn't know what exponential growth is. Let's debunk some more of Ken Hovind's arguments. Hmm. See, if you start with eight people having kids and grandkids and great-grandkids, you can get a population of five or six billion in a few thousand years. So if you believe in evolution, you got a serious problem. Because you think man's been here for three million years. Do you realize in three million years the population would have grown? Right now, there'd be 150,000 people per square inch. It took us 1,928 years to get from 250 million to 1.8 billion. It started increasing so rapidly because people's lifespans increased with the invention of vaccines, penicillin, and medical science in general. People die less often, which means they can have more kids throughout their lives, and those kids don't die young as often. After it reached a tipping point, it started growing exponentially. If every person has two kids, or four kids per couple, the population doubles every generation, which is about 25 years or so. But you don't believe in overpopulation, right? The fact is, the population says it's not been billions of years. You are incorrect, sir. That is not what the population says. Stars blow up about every 25 to 30 years. If it's a little one, they call it a nova. If it's a big one, they call it a supernova, okay? But about every 25 or 30 years, a star explodes. Well, they search the heavens with the Hubble telescope, and they can all, not even find 300 supernova rings. Question, if the universe is billions of years old, why aren't there billions of supernova rings? Why less than 300? Which would mean uh, less than 10,000 years. We date a supernova by looking at it in the X-ray spectrum, which measures the temperature of the supernova. From the temperature, we can figure out the speed of the shock wave, which will give you an estimated age. However, as they age, the rings become mixed up with the interstellar medium after about 100,000 years. So he's right to say that we can't see extremely old supernova. But we don't use supernova to date the age of the universe. If we want to know how old the universe is, we only need to look at how far away the farthest visible star is from us in light years. For example, if we can see the Andromeda Galaxy, which is 2.537 million light years away, we know that that light has been shining for 2.53 million years. That's how science works. The moon is going around the Earth. Did you know, as the moon goes around, it's gradually getting farther away. We're slowly losing the moon. It's only a couple inches a year, about three inches a year. The moon is getting farther from the earth every year. Well, if you bring the moon in closer, you start to create a problem because the moon causes the tides. Now, you folks in Jacksonville probably have to worry about the tides, don't you? If a hurricane hits during high tide, you've got a serious problem on your hand. Well, if you brought the moon in closer, the tides would be higher because of a law known as the inverse square law. If you brought the moon into one-third the distance, you take the one-third, inverse it, and square it, it's nine times the gravitational pull. And if you run all the math on this, you'll find out about 1.2 billion years ago, the moon was whizzing around just above the surface of the earth. Now, way before that, you're going to have a serious tide problem. This guy just can't help himself. He has to lie. He did some really shady shit with those numbers, too. He pulled the number one-third out of his ass. It's not even close to that. I'm about to do the numbers. But that's what he does. He takes an example that sounds reasonable, but is completely off. And he knows it's off. You think he didn't do this math before he did this whole presentation? Of course he did. He chose 1.2 billion years ago, but I chose 1.8 billion because that's when life really started to get a foothold. Of course you're going to make me do all this math. Okay, so we have C, which is the current distance of the moon from the Earth. R is the rate of decay. How far the moon recedes from the Earth per year. Y is how many years it's been since eukaryotic cells evolved into non-eukaryotic life. And I is the number of inches in a mile. G is the gravitational pull from the moon. The equation we'll use to figure this out is 1 over C 
minus ry over i over c to the second power equals g. So 230,000 minus 42,613 over 230,000 equals 187,387 over 230,000, which means the inverse square is 1 over 0 0.81472 squared. So the moon's gravitational pull was 1.5065 times stronger at the time. Keep in mind that we barely experience gravity from the moon now. We aren't talking about Earth's gravity. We're talking about the moon's gravity. I don't see the problem here. So that explains what happened to the tall dinosaurs. They got mooned. This chuckle fuck thinks he's so fucking funny. I've been watching a lot of his videos lately, and I'm going to be debunking every argument I can find. This is what he does. He fudges the numbers a little bit so that it looks like it's a real stretch to think the Earth is older than 6,000 years. And if you noticed, his little video of the moon going around the Earth is way out of proportion. This is a more accurate depiction of the Earth and the moon to scale. He's trying to shift the burden of proof so that we're the ones making an extraordinary claim. And he isn't even promoting his own ideas. He's just trying to shoot down scientific theories. Just like the intelligent design movement, it doesn't explain anything. It's just trying to poke a single hole in a single scientific theory, even if we did discover something that was irreducibly complex, as the intelligent design movement is trying to do, it wouldn't prove God did it. It would prove that we have a brand new mystery to solve. I'm completely serious when I say that it would be every scientist's dream to disprove evolution. Mystery is what gives our lives meaning.